Urban Mystics, what's good? It's Unique Divination and you're watching Urban Mystic TV. And I just wanted to make this video. I don't do a lot of gossip or tea. That's not really what my channel has ever been about. It's been about personal motivation, personal power, emotional, spiritual healing and development. But I kind of want to speak on this Jesse Smollett thing because it was very interesting. And from the minute that I heard the story, I didn't believe it at all. And I swear to God, I wish I would have did a celebrity reading on it the minute that I the story broke. Because I know for a fact that my reading would have told us that he was lying. And as I expressed myself about the situation, which for the most part, I try not to express myself about political things um, that's going on. Because I just don't like the tension and the static that it brings, right? Um, because most of the time my views are kind of contrasted to the majority of the public, right? But I saw this coming a mile away. There were so many different factors and holes in this story. Okay. There were so many different things. Like for one, we were told that Jesse Smollett was brutally hurt. He was attacked in the subway in the middle of Chicago, in the inner city of J downtown Chicago, right? So one story was that the assailants were white. I don't know if that came from him, but this is what was what was broke, what first broke out. The assailants were white. They had on MAGA hats. They dumped some type of liquid on him, which appeared to be bleach, and they tied a noose around his neck, and they beat him up, and they yelled, this is MAGA country. In the middle of Chicago, <laughs> inner city, downtown Chicago. Okay. I've never been to Chicago. Um, I know that all of Chicago is not a bad place, but I do know that Chicago was referred to as Chirac. Okay. The thing that struck me out about that story was for one, what were white men doing? And it was like two, three in the morning, right? What were they doing at subway two, three in the morning? Why did they target Jesse Smollett, who works, who is an actor on Empire? And they said something about him being on Empire is what I also heard. And why would they yell out, this is MAGA country? And be wearing MAGA hats as they beat this man up in the middle of the night. Okay. So then video footage broke out of the two assailants. It was dark. They looked like they had on some type of mask. There were no MAGA hats, which people would, oh, he never said that they were white. He didn't say they had MAGA hats. Okay. They yelled, this is MAGA country. <laughs> Again, I don't, not that I know anybody, but the people that I know, and I work with a lot of conservatives and Republicans, and I don't think any of them know anything about Empire. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't watch Empire myself. Or um, what's that other scandal and all that? I don't, I don't get into that stuff. But um, that just seemed very awkward in itself, right? And so the next thing that I found awkward was the fact that before he called the police, he called his manager. Not only did he call his manager, he proceeded to go home with a noose around his neck. I don't know about y'all, but I have a feeling that a black man, okay, that has just been attacked and abused is not going to walk home with the noose around their neck. And number one, they're not going to first call that manager. I feel like, and please, for all the black men that may potentially watch this, any person of color for that matter, and any other color if you want to chime in, but I'm specifically, I'm specifically asking melanated men of color. If you were beat up and jumped and somebody put a noose around your neck, are you going to walk home with that noose? I feel like you're going to be outraged. You're going to be angry. You're going to take that fucking noose off. You're probably going to still hold on to it for evidence, but we're not going to walk home with the fucking noose around your neck. I just don't logically see that. And so another thing that was odd was that he didn't want to give up his phone. 
He refused to give up his phone. His manager refused to give up his phone to the police. They would not assist in the, uh, the investigation. So now it's all out. Everybody knows. We all know the story was made up. Um, and people are really like in disbelief that he was lying. And I, I just don't see how y'all did how y'all believed him. Now, to my melanated people, my people of color, I need y'all to understand that the media plays on our emotional well-being. You know, they're always showing people getting killed, you know, cops shooting people. It's doing two things. They're, sub they're subconsciously speaking to us. They're letting us know that it can happen to you. And they also know that the feelings that it produces. And then we have the Democrats that come in and fucking like swoon in on this and they try to use it for their political gain, right? I am, I don't play any game in the political party. So for anybody to think that I'm a Republican, I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I'm not an independent. I'm not Green Party. I don't vote. I don't care if you don't like that. I don't vote. That is my right not to vote just like it's your right to vote. Okay. So I'm looking at this from an outward perspective, not, I'm not in the game. I don't play the game. Okay. And so the Democrats use these things to gain advantage. And so what would have been the gain if Jesse Smollett was attacked? He, well, what would have been the gain if he would have got away with this fake attack? Number one, he's a black man. And number two, Two, he's gay, so he's part of the LGBTQ community, okay? That would have really helped gain leverage and people to really support the Democratic Party and the people that are now running for president in 2020. I came across this meme. And I want y'all to I want y'all to let me know which how y'all feel about this, what you think about it. I don't know. I just came across it. I don't know how true it is. I just thought it was interesting if this is the dynamic that is going on. And hold on, let me pull it up. I think I deleted it. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Cory Booker, who's running for president, is dating Jesse Smollett's sister who also happens to be head of Children's Defense Fund, whose main pusher is Kamala Harris. And so the implication there, and before I say that, let me get the name of, um, so his sister's name is Journey Smollett Bell. And so, what the implication is, is that he was paid by Camilla or Cory Booker or maybe somebody even behind them. But nonetheless, the Democratic Party paid him to do this. And whether they wanted him to fumble and get caught, I highly doubt that. I don't know. But whatever it was, it was to kind of help the political sway towards the Democrat Democrats. I don't know if people are realizing it right now, but the media is not speaking on this movement called Blexit by a Candace Owens. Now, let me tell y'all again, I don't agree or disagree with any of this stuff. I'm just providing information. The only thing that I do agree on is that I knew that Jesse Smollett was lying about being attacked and victimized. And, and another thing, he didn't even have any fucking injuries or scratches on him. If somebody's going to beat your ass, if it's going to be a hate crime... Don't you think they would have fractured or broken parts of his body? What did he have, like a fucking scratch on his face? Like who fucking beats the shit out of you when there's nothing on your face? That alone right there is very telling. He doesn't look like, I'm not saying that he can't fight, but is he going to be able to fight off two people? Number one, they threw fucking bleach on him and put a noose around his neck. And they did all of this without injuring his face. He didn't fight as hard as he could. He, nothing got broken. Nobody got hurt. There's no blood or whatever. You know, whatever. It, it's just fucking outlandish. But the implication is the political part, the Democrats put him up to this. 
And as I was saying, there is a movement going on called hashtag Blexit, which black people are exiting the Democratic Party um, at a very large amount of numbers that the media does not want to speak on or let y'all see. A lot of people are tired of the games that the Democrats are playing. Um, before I got out of, the, out of the political game, I was a Democrat and then I switched over to independent and then I just fucking left out, okay? Because the Democrats are snakes. They act like they're for you and they're really against you. They want your vote and then they do nothing with it, okay? That's what we need to understand. And that's why I decided not to be a Democrat and I decided to try to vote independent. I thought that was what was best um, when I was in the political game. So with that being said, I just want, and the MAGA hat thing. That's another thing that the media is not allowing people to see. There are a lot of black people wearing these MAGA hats. It ain't just Kanye. <laughs> if you go on Twitter, you know, I don't know how many people use Twitter. I wasn't a Twitter person. I just deleted my Instagram and I've been on Twitter for a while. You'll find me Unique Divination. And there are a lot of black people that are wearing the MAGA hat, right? The media is not going to tell you this. And like I said, I'm not doing this to persuade anybody to be Republican or conservative. I'm really not saying go to either side. I really wish that we would all just get out of this fucking political fucking circus. And once we all stop voting... Once we realize the power that we have, we can change the government. We can implement our own shit, but we continue to play their game. And therefore, that's why we will always lose. The Democrats need the black people's vote. They always talk about the black people's vote. Yet we're supposed to be the minority. I even question. I have very eccentric ideas that I really don't express because... I just don't feel like arguing with motherfuckers and then having trolls. I just don't feel like it. But I honestly don't believe the census. I don't believe that black people are the 14% of the population. If we're 14% of the population, why do they need our vote so bad? Our vote matters. And they particularly always talk about how black women vote and how we vote smart, right? And so... Black people are exiting the Democratic Party in numbers that are not even believable, that the media will not even talk about, nor will they acknowledge. I never heard of the Blexit movement until I got on Twitter. Somehow, I don't know how I came into it, but I just need for y'all to be aware, especially for my melanated people. Stop allowing the media to control your emotions. When you are filled with emotion, you cannot think okay being filled with emotion is like being drunk you cannot think you cannot rationalize think about when you were in love or when you know when you were a kid and you were in love you couldn't think about nothing else but that boy or that girl that was on your mind even as adults shit women have dick on the brain men have pussy on the brain when you're angry when you're frustrated you can't see anything you can't register anything until you calm down you are not rational when you are thinking emotionally and so I say this to say, stop letting the media dictate your emotions. Stop letting the media get you upset. Stop letting the media make you happy, sad, angry, outraged. When you see something on the media, just wait. Just like the thing with the fucking, the Nathan Indian. And there's still some people that don't believe the truth after the video that came out about how them black Israelites, and again, I don't care that those white kids had on MAGA hats or that they were white kids. They were somebody's kids. And they were sitting there on a school trip, minding their business. Grown men are yelling atrocities at these children. And then they say to Nathan or Dan or whatever the fuck his name is, Dan, there go the MAGA hats. And they like coerce this man to go over there and to, these men approach these children. Whether we like it or not, I don't give a fuck if they had on MAGA hats. I don't care if they were white people, white children, white teenagers, grown men attacked kids. And then they were portrayed in the media as these demons. And I'm just like, oh my, what if that was your child? It doesn't matter the situation. What if your kid was in a situation 
where the media flipped it and made your child look like they were doing something that they weren't doing. To this day, I have people that still think that Dan was the victim in the situation when in all actuality, it was all those children, especially that main boy that had that man and a grown man in his face. That is absurd. What is this country coming to? Again, I don't care about the MAGA hats. I don't care that they were white. They were somebody's children. And grown men violated them for all the world to see and painted a picture that was not true. And when the real video came out, people are still like, you know, and then all the stuff that's coming out about Dan the Native, he's lying about things like stop letting the media control your emotions. And I'm getting, I'm getting upset and I'm getting mad because I am tired of melanated people always falling for the okie doke. You believe whatever the media tells you, you don't even try to sit back and at least wait or do your own research or watch another channel. Let's look at world news or let's let's look at a different news venue than what you're normally watching. OK. That's all I got to say on this situation with Jesse Smollett, with Dan the Native and those MAGA hat and those white kids and the black Israelites is just. Stop allowing the media to dictate your emotion. That's what the media does. It's how you control somebody. Right? What if you're in a relationship with somebody and they're constantly bringing you up and down in a roller coaster of emotions? That's fucking bipolar. The media is making you bipolar and y'all don't even see it. The media is a circus. Have y'all ever seen Idiocracy? If you have not seen Idiocracy by Mike Judge, the dude that made Beavis and Butthead, you need to watch that movie, okay? That movie came out in theaters. They didn't campaign for it. There were no trailers for it because they intentionally did not want people to see it. And it's fucking prophecy, okay? Look at Idiocracy, okay? It's a, it's a comedy, but nonetheless, it um, it's a betrayal of what's going on right now. Okay, and once again, I will say it, stop letting the media control your emotions. You're better than that. Let's have, let's use our critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills means that you question who, what, where, why, and how. You don't just believe something that somebody has automatically told you. Even the information here that I presented, go look and, and see if what I've said is true or not. I don't know if it's true. I'm presenting the information objectively. Without any feeling in it, you can also entertain an idea or, you know, an ideology without actually believing in it or, you know, you can do that. I'm doing this for conversation. I just want to know what everybody else thinks, you know. But like I said, I knew from the jump Jesse Smollett was lying. It was, it was written all over the place and everybody is just so crushed and why would he do such a thing? Well, I think it's deeper than he wanted more pay on Empire. I don't see anybody staging an attack to get more money. There is a plethora of other ways that he can go about doing that. And staging his own attack to get more money, does that seem accurate or plausible? I don't know. It's just absurd. But um, let me know what y'all think. And I'm out.